What's up? How you doing? Are you sitting in your club? <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all know I got problems, right? Listen, I know I've been missing in action. I know I have not been here. I've been going through some things. And when I tell you some things, I mean just that. I've been a little under the weather. You know I do the nanny thing, so I'm babysitting. And I'm still going shopping and doing my other little things and feeling under the weather. I got a doctor's appointment coming up though. So I got that. And then y'all, we went out, my godson, my goddaughter and her auntie. Oh my God, that reminds me of one of my favorite cousins. She look and talk just like her. And she's a Capricorn like myself. We had so much fun out there on that dance floor. And my goddaughter's brother, Mackie. <laughs> he's something else. But anyway, that's a whole nother story within itself. But anyways, so we go, we go dancing. I am having the time of my life just dancing up a storm. And they ended up, the little place we were, they closed a little early, about one. So I got home, I took my dog out. I ate something and I went to bed at about three o'clock. My phone is blowing up and it's my goddaughter. My godson is seizing out, right? He having these seizures and he didn't had about two of them before the ambulance got there. By the time the ambulance got there, um, when they bringing him in, the man, the ambulance worker, says that he had eight of them while he was in there and he was they were monitoring him and he stopped breathing a few times so they ended up and they had to put in he was put in critical condition and he had that in, in the ventilator thing and it was breathing him a hundred a hundred percent it was breathing for him y'all I know as his wife she going through it because just being a friend or a godmother y'all I sat here and I cried because I got four grown kids I got grandchildren you know what I mean and god babies and nieces and nephews and aunties and uncles cousins friends and associates my mama my daddy and when you sit back and you see things like that you think about everybody and that's all I can think about. I, I, I just thought about him and and it could have been my son, my others, my sons, or it could have been my daughters, it could have been anybody. And the feeling of stress just took over me. I couldn't go to sleep. I got up, I started cleaning. I organized and changed the shelves around and put stuff over here and cleaned up, went in the hallway. And you know, y'all seen my linen closet. I took every single thing from all the way from the top all the way down to the bottom out. Rearranged and cleaned it up, organized it to the T. Did the bathroom <laughs> cabinets. After I got that, it was three o'clock three o'clock in the morning. About that time, about five, the baby was coming. So I'm stressing. I got the baby. She calls me again and she tells me that he woke up. And uh, when they got ready to transfer him and he woke up, I'm like, oh, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I go back to sleep. I get back up. I got the baby. She calls again. He seized out again. He had been seizing out all day. I'm like, Lord, have mercy, Jesus, please. So I got up again <laughs> and I start cleaning. When I get stressed or uh -oh, something frustrates me, I clean. Y'all, when I went in, yeah, I didn't clean the up under the bottom of the sink, all the drawers, all the cabinets, move the refrigerator, clean the oven and the range, the microwave, the uh <laughs> the uh the toaster, the blender thing I'm a thing, um uh, the what you call that, the air fryer, 
Honey, everything is shining like it's brand new. I did everything that I thought I could do. I worked again until 4.30 the next morning. That's when the baby got hit by five. When I tell you, I feel like I lost my mind. And then I got up. And after the baby left, got dressed and went. Spent a couple of hours up there with him. He is feeling a little better. Get off of stuff. He's feeling a little better. He's off the thing down his throat. But that's hurting him. You know, his throat because it was there. And there's so many other things that's going on. And it's just so stressful. Y'all, yeah, it's deep. And I was like, wow, I couldn't function. Not being able to, not feeling good. So as I got home, I must have been crying. And my asthma had been flaring up. So my dog, I let her out. She been out every day, all day. Except when the baby is here. So I'm in there. I guess I fell asleep and I was crying and my asthma was acting up. And I, and I wasn't doing right. She nudged the hell out of me with her nose. She pushing me. Then she knew that once she licked me, I'm like, what the hell? She's standing over me looking at me like, yeah. I'm like, oh. And then when I got up and I finally realized my asthma was acting up, I was like, oh my God, my asthma acting up. She woke me up. Y'all, it was a blessing. See, she got her little toy right here now. <laughs> so when I tell you the animals are your safe, place and that they really and truly do love you and watch over and care for you yes they do and i'm gonna tell you something else life is too short to be angry and mad and talking crap all the time life is too short not to tell people that you love them not to show that you care not to show appreciation life is too short to be talking about coulda, woulda, shouldas. Baby, get up. Enjoy your life. Breathe. Do whatever it is that you need to do to make you happy. Because you don't know when your last days are going to be. I've been up. I've been cleaning. I, my house is my peace. You understand what I'm saying? So I figured getting it up, I, it's already clean. But why not go over it a little bit more? Why not make it a little bit better? It's comfortable and ready for me. And you sit around, y'all, and we... I'm knocking down everything. You sit around and we worry about so many things. Oh, my God, I ain't got no man. Oh, my God, I ain't got no woman. Oh, my God, this. And how I'm going to do this? And how I'm going to do this? You going to do it. Your man or your woman gonna come. Just get prepared for it. That's what I'm doing. My husband coming. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. I went down wrong. My husband is coming. I know he is. So I'm getting prepared. Not only am I preparing for him, I'm preparing for myself. Everything that I'm doing, I'm doing for myself. It's just another enhancing mix of getting ready for something better. So when you start thinking them bad thoughts, when you start thinking that you're going through something, you don't, oh, you are not the only one out here, baby, that's going through nothing. You're not. You are not alone. There's somebody out here that's going through something more ten times worse than what you're going through. You got a terrible, cheating ass man. There's somebody over here that's getting beat up by his man. Getting beat up by the man. It's somebody over here that's being cheated on, disrespected, everything, took for everything that I have. And you, us, we just feeling a little lonely. Girl, when I sit back and I get to thinking about things like that, I'll be like, thank you, God. Thank you. You sit back and you think about the people that you've been with and how they treat other people, but they didn't treat you like that. Baby, I'm got a family and I ain't nothing nice. You feel me? You got to let them know. I don't give a shit what you do to everybody else. You will not treat me that way. You will not and don't accept it. Right now, if you happy, stay happy. You ain't going to be happy every single day of your life, but you can be at peace. Deal with what you can and let everything else go by the way. Love, 
Be happy, live, love, and laugh. And what it is, whatever it is that you can't quite function around with it, and you can't quite put your finger on what it is, then that means it ain't supposed to be for you. Because if you can't figure it out, if it, you keep getting this terrible feeling, if you keep saying to yourself and you're trying to figure this out and you're trying to figure that out, if you got to do too many damn figures and out, then that means it ain't for you. If you got to keep trying to trying to convince yourself, you're trying to convince yourself, well, he for me. He, he don't come around like he's supposed to. Hmm. We don't, we don't have relations like we, you know, supposed to, but you know, you know, he, he may have a little problem or she don't, you know, you know, she didn't call me today and she didn't call me the other day like that. She must have been busy. Hell, that's because you was not on their mind. Stop making excuses up for people. Stop making excuses up. Would they make excuses up for what you're doing? No, they would not because they really don't give a damn. Stop letting everybody treat you like you an option. Stop letting everybody treat you. I don't give a hell who it is. You are, you number, you number one. Only time I'm not number one is to some babies. To my God upstairs. I'm not number one. But when it comes to anything else, I am numero uno. And if you can't accept me and give me what I want, then honey, I don't need you. My man, whenever he come, it's going to bring me peace. And I'm going to be his peace. Life is too short, y'all, to be out here accepting anything. Life is too short. I'd rather be alone, living my best life. I ain't going down with you people. I'm living my best life. You better think about that. Is it really okay to sit back and be misused and mistreated and put, have, put your hands on? Is it really? Is it okay for them not to come home at night knowing that y'all live together and y'all loving each other and it's supposed to be respect? Is that okay? Is it okay for her or him to be coming home smelling like somebody else's perfume and don't want you to touch them and don't want you to kiss them and don't want this? Is it really okay? Are you really sacrificing that to say that you got somebody? You ain't got somebody. You got a goddamn roommate. I don't need no damn roommate. I pay my own bills. Ain't nobody gonna I call and call me a cab. Shit, I might not have no car, but I'm gonna get where I got to get. Okay then. Stop letting people treat you like you're an option. Stop. Like my son told me today, Mom, you can't worry about everybody. You can't worry about everybody. You can't change everything. But I can show you love. I can show appreciation. But when I don't, when I, when I don't get reciprocated or you don't give it back then you get it no more that's all period point blank that's my 2024 realist resolution right now i'm going to eat healthier i'm going to exercise more i'm going to dance more live life laugh love and be happy and if i find somebody that's gonna fit me baby come on in but you gotta know one thing about me you gotta know a few things about me I got fibromyalgia, lupus, connective tissue disease, and neuropathy. I don't take no shit off nobody, and I don't give nobody no shit. I pay my own bills. I know how to love you, because I know how to love my damn self. I believe in my God upstairs. I'm family orientated. I don't take no mess off nobody. You ain't going to walk over me, and you ain't going to disrespect me, because I'm not going to do you like that. I got my own shit to bring to the table. What do you have to bring to my table? I'm bringing you peace, happiness, love, and joy. I'm giving you respect. I'm giving you consideration. I'm giving you effort and consistency. I'm going to feed you, bathe you, make sure you're clean. I'm going to make sure your man is right because I'm going to talk to you and tell you we like baby. And I'm going to build you up, not break you down. And I'm going to love you. That's what I got. And uh, don't have your hand out, baby, because I ain't got no money to give, give you. Because I'm not asking you for your money. I'm asking you for everything I just said. Period. When it come down to family, if family disrespectful, I don't give a hell. If it's a if it's an old kid, if you got a child and a child is older and they got things and places to do and play, hey, you better get to going. You better get to doing. You ain't a kid anymore. You did your job, babies. You did your job. You raised them. You helped them. They grown. They out. That's it. Okay. Okay. Period. This year. I'm living for Roxy Kelly. 
I'm going, I'm going to watch my grandbabies. I'm going to have fun. Uh, the weekends belong to me. I'm going to do my little job that I have. I'm going to keep my house clean. I'm going to keep my body clean. I'm going to take care of my face, my skin, my hair. Oh, yeah, I need my nails. I needed my nails done, but I've been cleaning so much to the solution. And I don't wear gloves in the house. This been... My nails are tender, so I'm trying to let them get a little more healed. And they so as hell before I go get the stuff done on them. Um, but I'm ready to go. I'm telling you, yeah, right now. This little, this just been a little inspirational talk because I know that somebody out there got to hear it. When you are in love and somebody loving you, it's beautiful. They are your peace. They're supposed to be your peace. They're not supposed to destroy you, break you down, treat you less than, make you second. No, no. When you love me, you're going to call me. You're going to text me. You're going to come see me. You're going to make sure that I am okay. You're going to pamper me, respect me, sit with me, talk with me, love me, and treat me like I'm special. Treat me like I'm the one because, honey, I'm going to treat you the same way. If you're getting less than, you don't deserve me. I'd rather be by myself than to settle and say I got a man. I'd rather be by myself to look at him disrespect me. I'd rather be by myself to sit back and you know we living together and you don't come in the way you're supposed to. You don't touch me. You don't rub me. You don't kiss me. You don't talk to me. You don't love me. There's no need for you here then. I can do that all by myself. And that's the same thing that's going with you guys out there. It's time to be happy. I'm starting back on doing my little exercise. I, I started a little today. I did 15 little squats. I'm going to do some uh, uh, wall Pilates. And a couple of more stretches. I had to get back into my yoga. But I've been juicing my butt off. I'm in cucumbers. I have cucumbers. Green apples. Green limes. And I got carrots. I got... Uh, I had a little cali uh, cauliflower. No, cauliflower. Kale. And I got one that got strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, uh, pineapples, apples, lemons, oranges. And then I got one that just got everything in the bag. And I juice every day. And I take a juice. I make me, I get me a container, a, a blender, and I blend out enough for at least three cups. One in the morning, one in the afternoon, and probably one before I went to, before I go to bed. It's been helping with my anti, it's anti-inflammatory. It helps with the, your skin. It helps with your hair. It helps with your nails. Ain't shit happening with my nails right now because I keep getting that damn bleach water or <laughs> sour water or something because I got to keep cleaning and I'm stressed because I'm worried. And I know sometimes you sit here and I'm talking about not stressing, but sometimes when you got people that you love and they going through something and you see them, Oh my God, to see him, to see him go through that. Oh my God. It, it just, it just, it hurts me. What are you doing? It hurt me. It really did. It really do hurts. So, but that's where I've been. I got still supposed to be a Dollar Tree haul, but I'm going to come back and make it to the next one. I'm just going to put this as a, a, a real life wake up call. Start loving yourself. Start living for you. Start enjoying who you are. You cannot be something for somebody else. Be who you are. And if they can't accept who you are, then you know what to do with them. Let the doorknob hit them with a good Lord. Split them. You feel me? There's nothing like your peace, your happiness, your love, your laughter. There's nothing like that. And people can come in at the drop of a dime and snatch your soul. And have you sitting there crying and have you sitting there emotional and have you sitting there lost where you can't even function. And it don't take much. Oh, because sometimes what happens is we get lonely. Yeah, we get lonely. And when, when you get lonely, you start thinking differently. Well, I could date him. I don't care if he got a wife. Or... I could date him, knowing he ain't nothing that you want. I could. I could date him. Oh, yeah. 
knowing at any other time if you was in your damn right mind, you wouldn't touch him. You wouldn't touch her. You wouldn't. But loneliness, loneliness got this effect on me. Girl, I'm saying F lonely. <laughs> I'm living my best life. I'm 56 years old until my man come. I don't have to have sex right now. That's, that's not what I really want. I want everything that comes with it. Period. Period. Don't settle. Don't let your, don't let your kooka mama or your little man downstairs lead you around. Get led by that big head on your shoulders. That's what he gave it to you for. That's what he gave it to you for. And remember, don't let nobody make no damn fool out of you. You ain't no damn fool. What happens to you is what you choose to happen to you. You already knew. You already seen the red flags. You already knew what the deal was. But your ass went along with it. You go, why? Because you was lonely. Because you thought you was doing something. We all fall down. It's just how you get back up and stay up. That counts. But I love y'all. I love you. I love you. I love y'all. Ciao. Peace.